Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. I'm a Forbes contributor covering social entrepreneurship and impact investing, and I'm excited about today's guests. We have with us today Nanef Wabam and Brianna DeQueer, and they're the founder and co-founder of Shared, the Shared Harvest Fund, talking about a, a, a really inspiring solution to the student loan crisis in America. So stick around. You don't want to miss this episode. Welcome to Your Mark on the World, bringing you another change maker with champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Nanefwa, Brianna, welcome to the show. Hi. Hello. <laughs> We're thrilled to have both of you here and thank you for taking the time. I know you're both busy and appreciate you uh, doing this. Uh, Nanefwa, why don't you just take a minute and tell us a little bit about uh, the Shared Harvest Fund concept? The Shared Harvest Fund is an initiative that is really about giving a little back to those who've given, them, given back a lot. And it stems from understanding that we come from a culture uh, where volunteerism is declining and individual debt, specifically student loan debt, is increasing. And, and people are out there struggling, trying to figure out a way to make ends meet. So who has time to do pro bono work anymore? Who has time to volunteer? So what we came up with is a strategy to capitalize on that gig economy, an economy that's really thriving, and match it up with the culture of volunteerism, um, all while paying back people's student loans. And that is, in essence, what Shared Harvest is. It's a brilliant model. Uh, I understand, uh, Brianna, maybe you could just take a minute and tell us a little bit about your Kickstarter campaign. Sure. Uh, firstly, uh, last we looked, our Kickstarter campaign is now 107% funded. And the goal of the Kickstarter campaign, if you note what our goal was, was $7,833. What that represents is one year of student loan debt for the average American. Okay, by the time they are, go through a four-year institution, most people graduate with about 37000 in debt. So that's about a year of student loan debt for the average person. So we wanted that to be symbolic. Um, the reason for Kickstarter was to make sure that we had a crowdfunding platform so that every individual can get behind our, our idea and that we get people to sign on to the idea of being part of the Debt Freelancer Initiative. Uh, the goal of that is to have people really understand the passion behind our idea and to really have the funding and support that we need to move forward, hire more employees, and to get the platform up and running and off the ground. Now, you've been working on this for a while. Uh, Nanefo, tell us where the idea came from and how you got started. Well, I think the idea really came from one day, you know, um, Rihanna and I are both emergency physicians, and it's taken a long time to get to where we are. We have went through quite a decade of education, and we also carry student loans from that. But we also have great jobs. Um, there's many of my friends, colleagues, and my patients who have done the same thing but don't have the same kind of job opportunities. And I think for us, the idea came and was just like, wow, you know, look how far we've come but look how a mess our, our society is right now, you know? We've almost lopsided the idea of going to um, college as now a burden. It's no longer an asset, you know? And, and for, for the most part, that's really where I, Brianna and I sat down one day and said, wow, there's got to be a better way to do this, you know? Um, I personally came from a culture of volunteerism. I, my family is, my mother was one of 14 um, siblings who um, was an immigrant, uh, um, immigrant and came to the U.S. She was the only one out of 14 that got an education. And because of that, I was able to have a lot of opportunities. I went to UCLA. And when I was at UCLA, I was one of the head um, program directors through the community programs office. And I was so engaged. And that's when I learned so much about just being who I was and loving what I do. And it's really what catapulted me to be a physician. But then along the way, life happened and professionalism happened. And I looked around one day and I realized there was little volunteering that I was doing. Uh, I was mentoring around me, but that at, at the at um, at my um, in my hospital and whatnot. But 
just wasn't really engaged like I was. And here I was fussing about what was going on in our world, and I hadn't done much about it in the last 10 years. So this is my way, and this is our way of being able to do, get back to the business of social good um, by spearheading the new generation of people who have great ideas. That's great. Now, Brianna, I, I'm wondering if you would help me understand something. Um, I, I think that the platform anticipates, the share, Shared Harvest Fund platform anticipates at least three different players, but I'm not sure how this all comes together. So you have a someone with student loans who mm -hmm. would volunteer or accept a, a an assignment of some kind from a nonprofit, which would be the Another player is the nonprofit organization. And then there are people who donate money uh, to support that. Um, does the money go to the nonprofit and then to the volunteer? Or does the, how does it all work? What are, what are the roles of each player? <laughs> Sure. Um, so there's actually, there are three players uh, when it comes to the Shared Harvest Fund. So there is the debt freelancer who are participants in the debt freelancer initiative. Those can be students or professionals or just pretty much anyone who has student loan debt, even parents of uh, students that have student loan debt, and even just friends or family members who want to participate in doing community work and help an individual or sponsor an individual to help pay down their student loan debt. So that's the debt freelancer initiative, if you will. So these are people who have student loan debt or know someone that does, who sign up on the platform, create a profile, and they can get matched with social causes that they believe in, convenient in their communities, sometimes be able to work on these projects from home, using the skills and talents that they already have and went to school for. You know, being able to put those things into good use in this freelancer sort of gig economy that we have. Those are debt freelancers. They are going to be partnered with projects from our change makers or nonprofit organizations who have those projects available and have the need uh, for resources and, and human resource uh, of our volunteers, if you will. So they would be also on the platform uh, with their opportunities available. The third player in the Shared Harvest Fund um, sort of platform is our harvesters. These are businesses that we're partnering with who believe, that, who, who believe in the importance of having student loan debt as part of the employee benefit package. I think the goal of Shared Harvest Fund is not just to educate and offer, you know, networking opportunities, offer projects where you can pay down your student loan debt. But as Nana alluded to, we're going to get into the culture of volunteerism and start changing the conversation about how important that is in society. The other thing we want to make sure we highlight is talking about the importance of having student loan debt be a part of the conversation when it comes to employee benefit packages. Having just retirement plans and having health insurance are just simply not enough anymore when student loan debt is such a huge burden to so many Americans. So those are the three players. You have your debt freelancers or the volunteers, the nonprofits, and then our employee-friendly business partners. I'm still not clear. Okay. And it's not your fault, it's mine. So, let, uh, let, so um, when the volunteer when, with student loans or one of the other players does a, does a task, sure. who pays? We pay. So Shared Harvest Fund would be paying through our funding, both through subscribership from our uh, debt freelancers uh, and the fees that we charge, human resource fees that we charge both through our nonprofits and the, um, the businesses that we partner with. So we pay on behalf of the nonprofit organization, often they're strapped for cash and they can't right. afford to pay. So we essentially are supplying them with the human resource and we pay the back end by paying down the student loans of the volunteers. I see. Brilliant, brilliant model. This is exciting stuff. I'm, I'm really uh, excited to learn more. Um, I think Nana wanted to add. Nana, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, I, I think you've got an event scheduled, kind of a, a progress celebration of sorts on, uh, I think it's June 19th, Juneteenth, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about that event that you have planned. Well, that is our Jubilee kickoff for the um, Shared Harvest Fund. It's our launch party. 
Um, it's the day that we have decided Juneteenth is a very special um, day in our history. It's about, in Black history, it's the day that um, uh, for, for several, uh, a long time before the Emancipation Proclamation, um, African Americans were not free, did not know that we were free until Juneteenth. And so it is a very special day to celebrate freedom in the African American, well, the American history. Um, it's all of our history. Right. And it's so, a vitally important day. Uh, I'm curious about that connection. So uh, the connection we came up with Juneteenth, it's the day that we are using to remind ourselves that history repeats itself. And if we are not engaged in making a change, we will repeat the same mistakes history did. So for us, Brianna, myself, and Joanne, who are the co-founders of the Shared Harvest, we said we are going to make a change that from this day forward, once we launch, anyone who has student loan debt will always have an opportunity to pay that off and do what they love doing and be a part of changing our society. And so that is a special day that we wanted to connect with the Share Harvest Fund for our history as an organization. So does student loan debt serve as a form of slavery in 2018? That's a great question. And I won't extend to say slavery, but it's certainly close to indentured servitude. I mean, I have to, I have to take a step back to really explain this because the reality is individuals who took on student loans were only doing it to better themselves, right? We have a society that profits it off of academia, enjoys the fruits of the labor of academia, but yet we are putting all that burden on the individual who already made the decision to be a, a, a great contributor to our society. So if they've already made that decision, we need to back them up. And there are so many millions, 44 million people who have student loan debt. That's real, $1.3 trillion. That's real money. And the reality is that we can make a difference. It's not that insurmountable. If every individual, and I was gonna speak back to what Rihanna had mentioned, if every individual, whether you're a debt freelancer, a nonprofit organization, a corporation, a government, put a little money on the side to support someone who did invest in themselves to help back, we can get rid of that $1.3 trillion. It is possible. Yeah, it's an important, important message. Brianna, let me ask you for a, a take on, on this, perhaps you know, but does the does student, student loan debt fall disproportionately on uh, African Americans? Student loan debt absolutely does. I think if we think about sort of the historical position that has left most African Americans in the sort of economic situation that they are in, socioeconomic situation that they're in, often students of color are coming to school usually without 529 plans or parents who can afford to pay off their student loans quite often because of you know, less opportunities and less access to people to give opportunities, you're often feeling like you have to get more and more education, going to graduate school and adding on more and more student loan debt burden in that process of sort of self-improvement. And so having that and not having a lot of resources when you do get out to help you pay, a lot of people helping their own families. Uh, so not only are you paying your student loan debt, but you're also paying you know bills for family members. These are some of the situations, unfortunately, you're in if you come from a background that is not so wealthy. Um, often also there's a lack of financial uh, education and awareness uh, for how to manage debt, what is responsible borrowing, what is good debt, what is bad debt. One of the focuses of our platform is just simply to educate people. What is good borrowing? What are good borrowing practices? What does it look like to responsibly and effectively pay down your student loans um, and, and not just student loans, but just living a debt-free lifestyle. So all of those things are, are important when you speak about just students in general, but particularly in the African-American and what are considered minority communities who often don't have access to some of the benefits of having that education. Now, I wonder if I could ask you, uh, 
you know, you've had a great career. You're a physician. You're, you know, doing super well. What, what's the most important lesson you've learned that you'd like to share with other social entrepreneurs? That's a great question. I think for me, what I've learned the most is you can only be great at being you and you have to have focus determination. Uh, we have a, a mantra around here at Chef Harvest, be who you love by loving what you do. And that is so critical because we all have something to contribute to this world. And sometimes that gets overshadowed as you are going down your journey. You're looking at your mentor or the next person and deciding, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be. This is who I want to be. But you've already decided, once you decide that you're going to be successful and that you are going to contribute to society, once you've loved yourself and say, I am who I want to be, then the world gets to see that beauty in you. And I think for me, I think... One of the things I wanted to piggyback on what Brianna had said in an initiative that we're doing is that the Plan It Forward initiative. So the idea is when you start college, what we want to offer our college students is when you start at day one, let's say you took out $20,000 to start college. By four years, we want to, instead of giving you a promissory note that says how much you owe, we want to give you a check that says you've earned $20,000. And so the, the, that four years that you've been in college, you have been planning that money forward and doing what you love in the meantime, volunteering, getting a better understanding of the world and the society around you. We have to really change the discourse of what it means to be a part of higher education and learning, and also learning by doing, learning by being in the community, in the field. And so I, I think that's the biggest lesson that I can send. Yeah. Brianna, what about you? What's the most important lesson you've learned? I think the most important lesson that uh, I've learned is that you have to be resilient and not give up. Um, as Nana was mentioning earlier regarding going on this path of education and training and over 10 years of becoming a physician, yes, we're successful, but being successful for a lot of people oftentimes means getting away from potentially doing the things that they love doing, right? Because you're in this pursuit of success that requires a lot of time, a lot of training, a lot of sacrifice. Some of that sacrifice, and again, changing the thoughts and the conversation around the culture of volunteerism, a lot of that sacrifice needs to be giving back to others. These are things that we all used to love to do and we still love doing, but finding a way to craft out time to do that is important for both your emotional and your physical health. I mean, over, there was a recent survey that was done and over 74% of people actually are now getting to the point of having depression and anxiety and physical symptoms regarding just having student loan debt alone, not to mention all the other pressures that they're under every day. So I think it's important to know that you can be resilient, that there are options that are out there that help improve the way you look at yourself and the world and what impact you feel like you're making on the world. And volunteering does that for everyone. Absolutely. Brianna, what is your superpower? Uh, <laughs> I would have to say as a pretty busy emergency physician um, and single mother now, uh, also now founder of this wonderful organization, I would have to say multitasking. I think I would say that about, you know, most mothers and fathers and people who have families. And even if you don't, everyone has to learn to multitask because getting into the idea of being able to do everything all at once is, is feasible, but not often something that people can do. So I think I've fairly, I've mastered that fairly well. I'm not going to say it's going <laughs> I'm definitely tired most days, but it, I get it, that. I get that. Well, Nana, what is your superpower? Uh, definitely my superpower is laughter and dancing. <laughs> I think that it's just the honest getting, to, I say I laugh from my, the gut and my husband used to say, you have such an infectious laugh because I think that's just the honest spirit of people bringing, just breaking down. Everything seems so insurmountable until you laugh about it. <laughs> and then you get back down to the work. And for me, also dancing helps me shake it off, get honest, get vulnerable. And um, I remember, actually, I always laugh about this. I, there was a guy, I don't know if you remember, who was a YouTube phenom because he went traveling around the world and dancing in these smaller communities. And I said, well, man, I wish I could do that. 
<laughs> so that's definitely my superpower. And I can get people to get on the dance floor. So watch out, Devin. <laughs> Well, uh, I really appreciate both of you taking the time to be with us this afternoon. Before you go, let me invite both of you. Uh, well, let, uh, Nana, maybe you could just speak for the group, but tell people how uh, they can learn more about Shared Harvest Fund, how they can contribute to the Kickstarter campaign, et cetera. Yes, excellent. Uh, thank you. Um, so you can jump on. We're right online on all our social media. Um, Twitter, we're on Ask the Fund. Um, our website is sharedharvestfund.org. Um, tomorrow, we have a special live event talking about debt and depression on our uh, Facebook Live page. You can just Facebook Shared Harvest Fund, and we're on Instagram and all of the other social media. So. Fantastic. Yes. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today, and we wish you every success with your Kickstarter campaign and thank putting you. an end to the scourge of student debt. Absolutely. Thank you so Thank much, Devin, for having us. All righty. Let's do some good. Thank you for listening. This podcast was recorded via Google Hangouts on Air and is available at youtube.com forward slash Devinthorpe. Subscribe to this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes by searching for Your Mark on the World. Every weekday, Devin hosts a CEO, celebrity, entrepreneur, or other changemaker here on the Your Mark on the World show to inspire and prepare you to make your mark. Devin is a champion of social good, writing about, advocating for, and advising people who are doing good. He is a Forbes contributor who is a recognized thought leader in social entrepreneurship, impact investing, and crowdfunding. To book Devin as a speaker, visit devinthorpe.com. Learn more about Devin's work at yourmarkontheworld.com.